Good morning, everyone. We're just giving it a second here as everyone is joining us from the waiting room and connecting their audio and logging in. We know that could take a second on Zoom. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending today's Autism Training and Technical Assistance Project monthly webinar. Um, today, we're gonna be discussing Autism Goes to College and how to find your best match. Um, I'm joined by my two colleagues today, my director, Amy Julian, who will be presenting um, in collaboration with my colleague, Brittany Boston, and they're gonna introduce themselves in a second. Um, but my name is Kirsten Bayer, and we all three are from the Illinois Center for Specialized Professional Support at Illinois State University. Um, I will be your moderator and technical support today. So feel free to reach out to me via the chat or via email. Um, I'll put my email in the chat momentarily here. If you have any technical issues during today's session or have any follow-up information um, regarding today's session that you would like access to, um, I can uh, be a, of assistance to you for that. Uh, a couple of housekeeping things before we get started. Uh, we are on the Zoom webinar platform, so you do not have the ability to uh, mute yourselves, um, but we do have closed captioning available and you do have the ability to raise your hand and participate in the chat. Um, we will have some time for question and answers, um, so we will have some time for that collaboration as well, but feel free to put any comments, questions, or concerns in the chat or the Q&A, and we will address those um, as needed. And then this session is being recorded, and today's recording and slide deck and any resources provided to you will be up on our Autism College and Career website. Uh, we'll put that in the chat momentarily as well, where you can access this information. All the information from today will also be sent out to you tomorrow via follow-up email, uh, along with a follow-up survey. So if you have five minutes out of your workday, we would appreciate any feedback you can provide us about um, any this session, past sessions, or if you have an interest um, in any topics for upcoming sessions uh, that we can provide the system. Um, and we also have closed captioning on today. Um, so feel free to turn that on for accessibility reasons or note taking purposes. Uh, we always have that turned on for, for the system today. So a little bit about ADA um, and who we are and what we do. So the Autism Training and Technical Assistance Project or ADA uh, develops and presents resources that assist individuals with autism in their transition from secondary education to post-secondary or employment into the workforce. And ADA provides training and support to important stakeholders across the system as we work to provide equitable experiences for those individuals on the spectrum. And with that, I believe, oh, I'm gonna cover this one too. Uh, and so who we are, we are ICSPS. Yes, it is the longest acronym and you will probably never remember it. Uh, I still, I've been here for two years now and I still have um, sometimes I still stumble over the letters, right? But we are the Illinois Center for Specialized Professional Support, and we create support and deliver PD or professional development for education professionals across the state of Illinois. Uh, we provide technical assistance, we develop publications, we do research, facilitate programs, um, and improvement strategies for all of our partners, specifically related to recruitment, college transition, retention, and completion. Um, and we have been around since 1977, and we're housed within Illinois State University um, in the EAF, or Educational Administration and Foundations Department, within the College of Education. So it is quite a mouthful, but um, we are reputable. Uh, and so this is the website. We're gonna put that in the chat momentarily for you. So you can have that direct hyperlink, um, but this is the website where you can reach everything about ADA. Um, it is sponsored by ISBE as well. And so we work in collaboration with them on this ADA grant and project. And so I'm gonna hand it off to, um, well, just kidding. I don't know why I keep thinking I'm gonna hand it off. Just kidding, still me. Um, okay, so which region are you located in? We're gonna do some beginning um, add a polls just for our analytical purposes that we do every month. So if you join us monthly, you're probably very familiar with these and we appreciate your ability um, to answer these even though they are a little redundant, but we uh, like to know who our audience is and where you're joining us from today. So which region are you located in and then which out of stakeholder do you represent? And you can feel free to pick multiple um, on the stakeholder question poll that's already up there for you. If you scroll down, both of the polls are up there. Um, so if you represent both a family member and a community member um, or secondary and community member, feel free to select 
multiple of those stakeholders. So we'll give that a couple more seconds here. Okay, it looks like everybody has answered mostly. So I'm gonna end that poll, share the results. We can just debrief on it. Most of you are joining us from up north in the state. So um, thank you, welcome to all of you. I hope you're staying warm up there. I know it's getting chillier here already in central Illinois. Um, and our stakeholders, most of you are somewhere in the secondary system or you're a student young adult. And we have a couple other stakeholders sprinkled across the board. So thank you all for answering those polls. We greatly appreciate it. And now I believe I'm going to hand it off to uh, my colleagues today to start the presentation. Thank you, Kirsten, and good morning, everyone. My name is Amy Julian. I'm the director for the Illinois Center for Specialized Professional Support at Illinois State University. And I'm also um, one of the project directors for the Autism Training and Technical Assistance Project. Also with me today is Brittany Boston. Brittany, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, good morning. My name is Brittany Boston, and I am the associate director out at ICSPS. Um, I work a little bit with the ADA grant, but also focusing on the CTE or the career and technical education side of things. Um, and so those those can be very connected depending on, you know, the, the education and career path that individuals choose. So one of the things I, I want to kick off and say is that I encourage you to go to the Autism Training and Technical Assistance website. Brittany posted that in the chat for us. Um, we do have a series that goes every month. And next month we have Aaron Eric Garcia coming in for Autism Month. And we are very excited to have him with us. And he has a new book out. If you haven't seen that book, it is phenomenal. And um, he's going to be sharing just some resources about that book and just things that he talks about. He is an individual living um, with autism and has had autism and talks and the name of the book is We're Not Broken. And so it's really looking at hiring and um, yes, we can repost that site, sure. Um, looking at ways in which you can empower individuals on the spectrum. Today, we're going to talk about what are those college opportunities? So in 2022, autistic students have more options than ever before when it comes to specialized college programs. Autistic students who participate in these programs have more opportunities to thrive in college than those who opt for the mainstream offerings. And in addition, additional support and encouragement they receive, they can, can make a big difference in the academic success as well as their overall college experience. So there's been a couple of reports that have come out literally in January and February around what are those colleges that are most receptive and what are those items or support systems or mechanisms or cohort um, projects that exist within colleges that allow them to be more successful for individuals with autism. So, I'm excited to talk about this today. And I really just in complete transparency, I really wanted to have some of these colleges come and talk with you, but it's spring break time and I did not schedule well. So I, we are going to um, share their information. We are gonna share the write-ups that have, they have been um, noted for. Um, there's a list of 16 individual colleges and universities across the country. We're gonna talk about what those systems are. In addition to that, we're gonna talk about what makes that transition. What are some tips for transitioning students? Um, and what are those things that you can do and be looking for? And then we're gonna close out with some tips for faculty today. What are things that you need to know? There's a couple of resources that we have for you. They're available on our site, but we'll be posting them in the chat as we go along. And really today's conversation is around as you're looking for a college, what are those things? What are those attributes that you wanna look for? So with that, my little disclaimer, the following list is a representation of colleges and universities that offer programs specifically for students on the autism spectrum. And this is a very recent list. So this came out in January of 2022. There are many opportunities for college students within with autism, I need to work on talking this morning, to get the individualized support services they need to be academically and socially successful. One of the things you're gonna find is when we're talking about the colleges, it's not academic on its own, it's not social on its own, it's that combination that really makes these programs successful. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first one is the Appalachia State University. And through scholarship with diverse ability programs, college age students with intellectual disabilities are given the tools they need for personal growth and occupational success. This program is entirely inclusive 
and meaning that students attend courses on campus activities with other university students and they have full access to all the university programs. So this is a phenomenal program and again, one of the ones that made the top top, top list. The number two on the list is Nova Southeastern University and it has an access plus program and it is a college supported program with students with autism attending Nova Southeastern University. The program provides services that support academic achievement, independent living skills and engagement with events on campus, daily study halls or study sessions, weekly psychoeducational groups. So those support groups that when we talk about transitioning, that is something that's so important is having those support groups in place. Um, residential supports and assisting in the planning schedules and maintaining structures are used for services offered. So there's some great wraparound services, as we like to call those, um, within the Nova Southeastern College, sorry, University. The next one is Boston University. And at Boston University, they have the Strategic Education Service Program, and it provides individualized practical assistance for students um, with attentional developmental disabilities. And through weekly one-on-one -on -one sessions, students develop skills focused on time management, planning, organization, study, test-taking, self-advocacy, and interpersonal skills, and additional re reasonable accommodations and supports are agreed upon, and referrals are made to other resources on campus. Some of the things that we're gonna to touch on of what makes these programs fantastic is also we're gonna to touch on when you're looking for a program. You wanna be sure that you talk to the um, student services program, you talk to disability services at your institution or the institutions that you're looking at and really looking at that self-advocacy and how to start that. And we've had complete sessions on that. Um, if you joined us for other webinars, I know that when we had Holly Moss, she talked a lot about self-advocacy and we can post some of those, but they're also um, underneath the um, autism training, autism career, college and career website. The next one on the list is Drexel University and Drexel's autism program promotes academic and social competency, self-advocacy, independent living and social integration skills through one-on-one -on -one peer mentoring. You're gonna hear that a lot. And I know Brittany's gonna talk about that when she talks about tips and things to look for is whether or not they have a mentoring program. Supplemental case management with trained staff workshops, structured and unstructured social events. And again, something else that you're looking for um, when you're looking for institutions to attend and collaboration with campus departments. Um, they have the AJ Drexel Autism Institute, the Steinbrunt Career Development Center and the Dragon Scholar Program are all available at Drexel University. And then the last one on the list there, and again, I don't think that these are in any particular order. It's, they're obviously not alphabetical though as well, um, is Eastern Michigan University. And the college supports program at Eastern Michigan University strives to increase awareness of autism spectrum disorder, promotes a positive academic environment and improves coordination of university services, meets individuals' needs for each student and guides students to becoming independent adults. So again, we're gonna go through these and kind of just, if you haven't heard of these institutions, these are the snippets that are from their websites based on the research that we have done and the list that have been put out um, by entities that are really looking at what are effective colleges for individuals with autism. And then we're going to um, talk about some tips. So Bellevue College, um, they have the Neurodiversity Navigators Program at Bellevue College offers educational opportunities, along with individual advocacy and access services, in addition to accommodations provided through Disability Resource Center. The program strives to increase successful academic outcomes in areas of executive functioning, self-advocacy, and career prep. Students with Autism Transitional Educational Program, or the STEP program, and that's the program that you would look for at Bellevue, um, Oh, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead there. So Eastern Illinois University is who has a step program. I was gonna say that one sounds really familiar. So right here in Illinois, we have Eastern Illinois University and they have their step program, Students with Autism Transitional Education Program. And um, it enhances supports beyond what is required by the ADA and areas of academic, social and daily living in order to minimize the challenges of transitioning into college life. So it is a cohort program that is really a program onto itself as a step program. Fairleigh Dixon University has a COMPASS program, and that's the name of their program there. So you have STEP at Illinois Eastern, and then you have, I'm sorry, Eastern Illinois, and then you have the COMPASS program at Fairleigh Dex Dixon. And it is a program that individualized comprehensive, comprehensive academic and social supports offering high-functioning students 
on the autism spectrum um, two year program that helps students identify their strengths, develop new skills and progress towards their higher level independence. Edinburgh is another institution and they have what is called the Borough Autism Support Initiative for Success, BASIS. Gotta love the acronyms that spell words. And it is an individualized support program that provides various services such as social and academic peer advising, regular sessions with transition coaching. Again, coaching is another thing, looking at that mentoring and coaching component, classroom accommodations, testing modifications, writing special services and social activities. The final one on the list there is Beacon College. And Beacon College is a first accredited college offering a four-year degree specifically for students with learning disabilities. And Beacon offers a bachelor's of, and associate's degree for many different disciplines, transition programming, ongoing support, and focuses on gaining practical experience are all offered within that institution. Our final list here, and again, these are in no particular order, is George Mason University. And at George Mason University, you will find the Mason Autism Support Initiative. It uses a team-based approach to provide additional support services and students on the autism spectrum. Um, students in the program gain access to learning strategies whom they meet with one-on-one -on -one to two times, one, as you can tell I'm reading notes, I apologize. One to two times per week, there are peer mentors in that program as well. There's monthly social activities, there is a half credit individualized course focused on topics such as transitioning to college, social skills, campus resources, and career readiness. And so that is a very inclusive program as well. Rutgers University has also made the list. And at Rutgers University, they have the Douglas Developmental Disability Center. And it is an ABA program that serves the needs of students with autism and their families. Specialized education and behavior intervention services are provided through a full day extended school year program for students up to the ages of 21. And so that is a program that more works within the K-12 system, but they did make the list for a fantastic college or university. Next on our list is Idaho, University of Idaho, not Idaho, I didn't want to say that backwards. Um, and they have the Raven Scholar Program which is autistic students at the University of Idaho receive individualized support to help with transition to college. Supports include weekly planning meetings, peer mentoring services, academic supports, individualized skills coaching, life and social skills, classes, monthly social events, advocacy, service learning and opportunities um, and access to the Raven Scholars Student Lounge. One of the institutions that we've heard a lot about in the world of autism is Marshall University. And Marshall University, of course, made the list. They have a phenomenal program in West Virginia. Um, it is called the West Virginia Autism Training Center at Marshall University. And it offers college programs that provide personalized assistance to students with autism so they can achieve their academic and personal goals. The goal of the center is to help students pursue quality of life in their, and they, the quality of life that they envision. Marshall is a fantastic program. And I know that when we have worked with the Autism Training and Technical Assistance Project, it is one of the universities that we work with readily to develop our materials and to vet our materials through. Fantastic program there. Um, Western Kentucky University has the Kelly Autism Program at Western Kentucky University. And um, it offers supports to students on the spectrum through individualized education plans, classroom accommodations, tutoring, participation in community activities, and then also job coaching and parent support. And those are, again, essential components of support through Western Kentucky University. And our final institution on the list that we wanted to highlight for you today is Kent State University. And they offer multiple autism initiatives, including a college success program for students with autism and partnering for achievement and learning success, which is their PALS program. And this initiative provides support and resources to help students become successful on campus, and it works to spread autism awareness and understanding. So this is a comprehensive list um, across the country of programs that were highlighted um, supporting individuals as they transition with autism. One of the things that we're going to talk about now is the idea for tips for successful transitions. So I'm going to hand the floor over to Brittany. And not saying that those are the only institutions to go to, want to be sure that that's clear. Those were highlighted in a national um, recognition of schools that really go out of their way to support individuals on the spectrum. And so as you're looking at any institution, what are some tips for successful transition? Thank you, Amy. So we're gonna go dive a bit deeper into either you yourself as a potential student 
or if you um, are a parent of a potential student and want to have this, this toolkit in your toolbox, um, or if you're a, a secondary teacher and want to be able to advise your students that are looking to go into the post-secondary system as to what to look for for those, those colleges, I'm going to put in the chat um, a document that we have it's called support changes from high school to college, um, because that's one of the key things when you when you have a student who is moving from the secondary system into the post secondary system. There is a shift right when it comes to that expectation of independence of self advocacy moving from high school into whether it's a community college a university into that post secondary world. Um, they they are expected to develop those self-advocacy skills and be able to advocate for themselves when it comes to accommodations and their needs and so on and so forth. And so we're going to dive a little bit deeper into how to have those conversations, what to look for, what to ask. Um, so the first here on our list is reaching out to the college's disabilities services office. That as um, a student on the spectrum is going to be your hub, right? That's going to be the individuals that you're going to talk to when it comes to receiving accommodations. Um, they, you want that to be sort of your first line of communications because the individuals that work in that office are going to be able to provide you with the supports and services and accommodations that you need um, or reach out within the community where that college is located to get those additional supports and services. So you want to make sure that you are asking about the disability services office, what that looks like, um, who the contact is out there, what kind of accommodations they're able to provide and being in communication with them. We also strongly encourage you, whether you are a potential student, a parent of a potential student, an instructor, a teacher, so on and so forth, become familiar with ADA, that Americans with Disabilities Act, because that is going to give you all of the information that you need when it comes to laws and regulations about what you're able what is what accommodations you're allowed to have right um, whether it's more time to get to class whether it's note takers in the class alternative testing locations your the ada will list everything out there for you so you are able to talk the talk so to speak when it comes to your rights as a student um, and as an individual with a disability so we'll move on to the next one. So more tips for a successful transition and you'll see a theme along here. We talk a lot about self-advocating, um, how to have those conversations when it comes to receiving your accommodations, um, disclosing your disability. So when you were looking at colleges, especially colleges that have on-campus housing, making sure you're reaching out to your resident directors or resident advisors um, and so that they are aware that um, and understand the needs of students with ASD um, and maybe lacking in those social skills or if they need special living accommodations, that's going to be your main contact there. And that's also something to ask when you are, you know, kind of investigating potential colleges, right? What does the living environment look like? Do you have on-campus housing? Um, do I need to look for an apartment or another living um, situation? What kind of accommodations can be provided um, within those living environments if, if that's something that I need? What does that look like? And then discuss and practice how to self-advocate. Self-advocating is huge. Um, we know a lot of times that neurotypical people learn how to advocate for themselves and um, what is meant to be disclosed and what's not through a combination of observation, practice, and self-reflection. Um, but we also know that a lot of times um, individuals on the autism spectrum need direct instruction on self-advocacy and disclosure um, because of those difficulties potentially reading nonverbal cues. And so there, there is an article by Sibley that was in 2004 that gives some excellent examples of how to mentor self-advocacy and disclosure skills um, and kind of graduated steps. 
So for example, in the early stages, um, there's an advocacy partner that works with the advocate and training and models good advocacy skills. And so this can be something that if you are um, currently a secondary teacher or a parent with um, a child who is on the autism spectrum, being able to model those advocacy skills for, for that potential student. What does that look like? Um, being the example yourself. And we know as parents, I am a parent myself, and so you kind of, you, you show the behavior that you want them to do, right? I have a three and a five-year-old, and so I have to constantly model the behavior, the expectation for my little ones as well. And so making sure that when we have you know adult children that we're doing that as well what does self-advocating look like in real life examples for our children and our students um, real life situations can be used <laughs> And so by the end of the process, we want to make sure that the advocate partner can serve as a resource and be tapped into if and when needed. Um, and so again, that self-advocacy for those students and discussing and practicing disclosure strategies. Again, what does that look like? When is the appropriate time to disclose my disability? How do I have that conversation? What are the, what's the language and terms and words that I use to make sure um, that I am disclosing all of my needs and accommodations that I require in order to be successful, not only in an academic environment, but in my living environment as well. So an example here, um, you know, when you're when you're looking at different colleges, let's say we have a student on the autism spectrum, they do their research into the disability offices, right? We want to make sure that we're seeing what those, what the disability offices look like, what they're providing. Um, and then through their online research, they learn about the type and level of assistance available at different schools, as well as the documentation to re documentation required to access accommodations and services. And then, so we know all the things we need. We know the documentation that we need. We know what accommodations can be can be available to us. And so let's say the student gets accepted into college, right? So she immediately makes an appointment with the college disability counselor so that she can disclose her disability and make arrangements. Um, she then supplies the required documentation. So that could be you know, a copy of her neuropsychological examination or whatever other um, documentation that the college may require. Additionally, she mentions the academic accommodations that were helpful to her in high school and inquires if the college offers similar assistance. Um, the student can then lay this groundwork um, is well on her way towards receiving those needed accommodations. So she was able to have that conversation, do her research, and then say, okay, here, here is, here's my expectations and here's what I need in order to be successful can you assist in that process? And so when we're talking about accommodations, um, those IEPs or the Individualized Education Plan is an excellent way to fill the current education gap in the development of self-advocacy and disclosure skills. Um, just as the IEP is used to level the academic playing field by allowing those with disabilities to have the same chances as everyone else for success in school, uh, so too must the same be done for teaching self-advocacy. Um, the beauty of using the IEP or that individualized education plan for teaching school-aged children um, these skills is that it already exists and it is an excellent vehicle for this purpose. And so when you have those IEPs, um, there should be in that process a, a way for students to learn how to self-advocate for themselves um, and, and disclose their disabilities and having those conversations both already in your secondary system, but as well moving into and researching those colleges, what that looks like when, so if you're accepted into college and you enroll, you want to make sure that you've already had those conversations, right? Because you don't want to get accepted and start on day one and it's, wait a minute, this is not what I expected it to be. I don't have the tools that I need in order to be successful as a student. Um, we wanna make sure that we're having those conversations up front. And these colleges, if, if they are the right fit for you and if they are meant to help you be successful, 
they should be able to have those conversations with you, right? It shouldn't be a, well, we'll, we'll get to that later. They should be able to answer your questions. They should be able to provide you with the supports and services that they have. They should be able to give you all of that information before you even hit that apply button. And Brittany, and I'll transition to the server, but Brittany, as if you haven't seen the sessions that were done by Hallie Moss on going to college and talking about the conversations, not only with the recruitment office and with um, student services, but also with your roommate and with your RA, those are some fantastic conversations that you need to have. Um, we really encourage you because that self-advocacy is all in all aspects of attending a post-secondary institution, all aspects, not just with your faculty and not just with the institution, but also with those resident halls and whether or not you have a roommate or do you have a roommate. So I'll let, sorry, didn't mean to interrupt there. Yeah, no, you're good. Um, and so just a few more things as to what to look for at for a potential college. Um, study support. Do they have a tutoring center? Um, do they have and do they have students that provide tutoring services? Do they have um, study groups within different programs within the college? Um, is that something that you think that you would need? Make sure that that's a service that's being provided. Peer mentoring opportunities. Um, if you've sat in on any of ICSPS's webinars, you know that we are big advocates for peer mentoring, right? Um, it's, it's a type of support group. Um, now, whether that is um, a mentoring support group for individuals on the spectrum, whether that's a mixed population of individuals, um, whatever it is that, that you think that you need in order to assist you in being successful, making sure that they have those options, right, available to have those conversations with your peers, um, whether it's academic or social, having that support system can be very helpful. Individual and group counseling, um, if that's something that, that you feel would be successful, again, whether it's for mental health services, whether it's for disabilities, whether it's for academic purposes, do they have that as, as a service that they provide for counseling? One-on-one um, -on -one academic support and coaching, again, that goes sort of more into that study support, but do are there instructors open to having office hours to where you can come in and say, you know what, I'm really struggling here. Can we meet for 30 to 45 minutes to take a little bit deeper dive into this to where I can really hone in and focus with you here with me? Um, do you have a coaching model? Are they open to that extra added support? And again, those are questions you can ask when you're applying. Um, reach out to, to an academic advisor and, and ask those questions. What, um, how much time do the instructors take to have one-on-one -on -one with their students? Do they provide office hours outside of the classroom? What does that look like? Does the college offer planned social events? Do they have a homecoming? Do they have um, other um, events and activities outside of just the academic portion of the day? Is that something that you are interested in participating in um, and asking questions along those lines as well? And then career guidance, you know, um, I know when I went into college, I thought I knew exactly what I wanted to do and what my career goal was. And I got a bachelor's in psychology and I'm here doing this. <laughs> and I love it, but it's not exactly where I thought my career path was taking me. So do they offer some career exploration opportunities? Had you been doing that in high school? Do you know exactly what you wanna go into and then having them kind of dive deeper into the different elements of agriculture or welding or whatever it is that you're choosing, the path that you're choosing to go into? Do they have those supports to assist you when it comes to either A, making that choice as to what your career future looks like or B, helping you fulfill that? You know, do they have an area of focus within the career that you want to go into? If they don't, then they might not be the right fit for you. Um, and making sure that you're you're asking those questions and, and looking at what your end goal is and if they have the appropriate steps 
to help you get there. Brittany, I think that's just so very important. Every institution is fantastic at different elements. And what the challenge for any student, but especially students who um, are autistic, is that idea of finding the fit that works best for you. Finding the college, the program, the institution that works best for you. And, and that is just so very important. So ask those questions, advocate for your student, advocate if you're a student, advocate for yourself and get the answers that you want. And if they can't provide you those answers, maybe they don't have that because not all, not all higher education is created equally. I mean, every institution that I've worked with has some kind of specialization. And I know that when I talk with students, it's like, oh, I wanna go, I wanna go into this. Oh, have you looked at this institution? So that's why this was so fun and important for us to give to you. So if you are looking at going to um, institutions, what are, what are those areas that, or the colleges that are best supported for students um, on the spectrum? So some tips for faculty, if we have faculty in our audience, there is a resource that I believe we're gonna post in the chat there, but just some tips there. So um, break large assignments into smaller units to be turned in separately. I wanna tell you, so these are tips for faculty, again, specifically designed by this program, but at the same time, these are also tips that help all of your students. And that's one of the beautiful things about the tips and tricks and strategies that we share. Provide direct feedback and set clear boundaries, provide examples, or I'm sorry, provide ample response time for questions. So um, allow them time to digest and then respond to those questions. Provide a predictable routine. Let all your students know what your routine is gonna be. Consider allowing use of technology or laptops for in-classroom work and note-taking. Allow extra transition time if that's needed. Help with organizational supports, color coding binders and folders. I I'm a color coding junkie. I have all kinds of my stuff. My whole email is color coded into different things. And I think it just really helps you, you know, delineate and prioritize. Um, allow reminders of, assist, of assignments. This is very easy now in the world of COVID that we're able to send out those little email ticklers or to put something on our teams or to put something on our Blackboard to really remind our students about assignments. Avoid using idioms, metaphors, sarcasm, and jokes. Um, we've talked a lot about this when we talk with students on the spectrum, they, it goes over their head or it doesn't, I don't want to say over their head, that was wrong, so I apologize for that. It doesn't, isn't digested in the same manner. Um, so it is something that we want to be aware of as faculty. Um, consider assigning group roles and then supplement oral instruction with visual written instruction paired with graphics. Again, all of these tips will help all of our students. Um, professors often don't know how to support students with autism. Some professors might be scared or intimidated by students with ASD. Others may be influenced by stereotypes in the media. Most important thing uh, a professor can do is accept the student with ASD are different and that they will require some special accommodations. This means honoring our accommodations and taking time to work with us or work with our students and the Disability Services Office. And if you do that, you're going to have a successful time. Um, just a note, and I know we many of us know this, but autism is a behavioral is not a behavioral problem. People with autism are wired differently. So, for example, some students may ask a question in class and then ask the same question again a few minutes later. As a professor, we encourage you not to get annoyed with this, um, but sometimes individuals need to hear um, the same thing twice or more than one time within the um, area. So those are some tips for faculty. Um, Brittany has posted that resource in there. And I do just wanna thank you for your time today. And if there's any questions, you can post those in the chat. And then I wanna do a little marketing plug for um, what's coming up. And so I believe you stayed with me here. Um, this is our website. So if you haven't been to our website, we do encourage you to visit us on the web and then the monthly webinar series there. And if you're interested, we have um, We're Not Broken, Changing the Autism Conversation. It's April 12th. We will be um, in, uh, we have invited Eric Garcia. We're excited to have him with us. And then on in May, we're talking about coaching models for students with disabilities. And that is being led by um, a faculty here at ISU talking about coaching models and looking at all disabilities, but definitely focusing on um, autism. And then in June, 
the return on investment benefits of hiring talented autistic people in the workplace. And we're very excited to have that presentation as well. And then uh, in July, we're looking at culturally responsive pedagogy and advocacy for individuals with disabilities. So we have quite a bit um, coming up for you. Very excited to have those webinars. Um, if you have any questions on those or need to register, you just click and go. And those are all Zoom links. Everything is recorded. And you can come back and watch it or share it out at another time. And again, if you haven't seen, I want to also show you this. If you didn't see us last month, it was neurodivergent employees embracing and valuing autistic people in the workplace it was a phenomenal webinar. I'm talking with individuals who challenges they've had, struggles they've had, how they've overcome, it's been fantastic. Uh, and then we have had a session on ADA and A+, which is quality indicators that should be in the classrooms. So some fun work going on there for the K-12 system. And then Autism University, yet lessons beyond the classroom. That is a session that I've been referencing a couple times, which was um, Hallie Moss. But there's quite a few on here. So I'm scrolling down so you can see. I really encourage you to check these out. You'll have a lot of fun. Um, learning about those and we encourage you to register with us. I am seeing some great comments, but I am not seeing questions. Um, are there more in the area of Illinois? Yes. So Deborah, that was a question. We featured a lot of institutions that are nationwide and there was only one featured within the state of Illinois. I will say that Deborah, there are some phenomenal community colleges within the state of Illinois that have great support systems for individuals with autism. In addition to that, there's a lot of public entities. They didn't make the top 16 list, um, but I know ISU, for example, has a lot of supports for our students with autism. We have featured those programs before, and so um, we didn't feature them again. But again, if you want to look down through here, let me see if I can find it for you. Um, Transitioning to post-secondary education was last February. And so we had, um, we featured three community colleges and I believe ISU was featured on that webinar as well. So to answer that question, that's kind of why we did the national trend this year because last year we did the local application. Yes, we can share that again. Any other questions, comments? Again, I encourage you to register and um, join us next month. Eric will be much more exciting. Um, not that Brittany and I weren't exciting, but I'm very, I'm very excited to hear him speak and um, we're excited to have him. So with that, I wanna thank you all very much for your time today and um, we look forward to seeing you next month.